Thus far in our study of statistics, we have focused our attention either on describing a sample, its mean, its proportion, its standard deviation, or on probabilities, where we're trying to figure out how likely an event is to occur or how extreme that event could be. We're going to now wade into the next half of statistics, which is focused on what is called inferential statistics. Inferential statistics tries to use the sample to make an inference or a really good educated guess about how the entire population is behaving. These first videos are going to kind of introduce, in theory, conceptually, how inferential statistics works. And then in future sections, we'll dive into actually how to calculate the inferential statistics depending on our situations. The first thing that we'll look at in inferential statistics is what is called a confidence interval. And to kind of get the idea of how confidence intervals work, we're going to take a look at um, an analogy of fishing. One way that we could go fishing is we could do what is called spear fishing. The idea is I've got this big lake, and I'm on a boat. And in order to catch the fish, I have this big spear, this big long stick with a point on it that I'm going to throw in the water and try and hit the fish. Don't judge my drawings. That's a fish. Now, I'm going to kind of have to guess where that fish actually is as I try and hit it. And that guess of where the fish is. is what we're going to call the point estimate. And the point estimate is very likely close to where the real fish is. But the truth is, if I throw this spear in the water, it's only going to hit one point, and I may miss the fish. So there's an alternative to spear fishing, and that is to use a net. The idea of the net is, again, we've got this big lake. I'm still on the boat. And I still want to catch this fish. But instead of trying to throw a spear and hit the fish at one spot, I'm going to throw the net around where my guess is. And so I throw this big net around where I think the fish is. And the net should be able to, or at least is more likely to, actually catch the fish. This is what we call the confidence interval. It is a wider space around the point estimate to increase the probability that we actually catch the fish. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to cast a net around where we think the fish is or around where we think the parameter is to hopefully capture the parameter within our net on each side. As we cast this net, what we're really doing is we're accounting for some error. The error you could think about is the size of the net or allowing us to be off from the fish, maybe how far off we may be from the fish. And if we want to be more confident that we catch the fish, to be more confident of success in catching the fish, we need a bigger net. Or in other words, we need to allow for a bigger error. So what does this look like in practice, not metaphorically, but actually uh, trying to catch the parameter? Let's look at an example. A recent poll suggests 
that 48% of a town support a levy. And the research department is 90% confident the air in this sample is no more than 6%. You've probably seen this type of thing on news reports with polls as well. They say this is the support plus or minus a percentage error. This is the exact same thing. The idea is we've got this error of 6% or 0.06 around a point estimate. The point estimate came from the poll. The point estimate says we think 48% is probably pretty accurate of what the town, how much of the town supports the levy. Now, we didn't interview everybody, so we're off by an error of up to 6%. So to calculate the confidence interval, we're going to cast the net on both sides of the point estimate. In other words, we'll take 0.48. And we will subtract and add the error of 0.06. When I do 0.48 minus 0.06, we get 0.42. When I do 0.48 plus 0.06, I get 0.54. And so the researcher can interpret this confidence interval by saying the researcher is 90% confident. That confidence is the size of the net. A bigger net means you're more confident. We're 90% confident. The proportion of the town who support the levy is between 0.42 and 0.54. Our sample was 48%, but for the entire town, it's probably 90% confident. It's probably between 0.42 and 0.54 for the entire town. So let's look more at what this actually means. Looking more at what this actually means, when I say we're 90% confident, we're actually saying how confident we are we actually catch the fish. So visually, let's look at this. Let's say visually. This line represents the true proportion of people in the town who support the levy. If we're 90% confident, that means I could draw nine lines down this line. Let's say that's one confidence interval. There's two, there's three, there's four. Maybe we've got number five over here. And then there's six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'll stick it in the middle. I ran out of space. What you notice is these confidence intervals are saying we think if the first confidence interval at the top means we think the value is somewhere between these two numbers. Then we collect another sample and we say we think the value is between these two numbers. Then we collect another sample and we think the value is between these two numbers. What we don't know is where the actual value of the proportion is. We just think it's somewhere between these two values. And the problem is we don't know if we're right because you notice one of these totally missed the black line. We don't know if we have one of the blue lines or one of the, or the red line that missed it. All we know is using this method 9 out of 10 times, or 90% of the time, this process will capture the true population parameter, which means 10% of the time we don't actually capture the true parameter. We never know in statistics, though, which sample we're working with. Are we working with a good one or a bad one? We don't know. We're just 90% confident that we're right. 10% of the time, we're going to be wrong and we're going to miss it.
That's what we're doing with a confidence interval. We're trying to catch that fish using the point estimate of where we think the fish is and throw a net around the fish to hopefully capture the actual fish.